Uh, today, I want to say just a few words about, um, about Sikhism. In these few minutes, I can, it's hard to even know what to select. And uh, in this case, what I will focus upon is the distinctive contribution that has been made to world spirituality by the founder of Sikhism, Guru Nanak. And more of that in a couple of moments. What is Sikhism? Um, Sikhism, sometimes in English people pronounce this as Sikhism, but actually the, probably the better pronunciation closer to the, uh, to the Punjabi uh, na name of the religious tradition is Sikhism. The word Sikh in Punjabi means a student or a disciple. Um, and so Guru Nanak and his followers see themselves as students, and the, the Sikhs see themselves as students or followers of this ancient tradition. Um, Sikhism, the ism on the end, is uh, not part of the Sikh tradition, except in modern times and when using the English language. And we find that actually the way religious studies in the West has developed as a, as a consequence of, of the theologies and the religious traditions of the modern West, that this idea arose of religious traditions as being these separate, isolated entities, kind of like the silos I was talking about at the beginning in the first uh, lecture, and that the, each of these religions is a distinct body of teachings, doctrines. Western religious scholars up until very recently were often very much focused on doctrine, which was a feature of, of Latin-based Western forms of Christianity, which focused heavily on doctrine. A lot of popular apologetics that you can find on the internet focuses upon the doctrines of these religions. Uh, and there is doctrine in Sikhism, and at the heart of Sikhism is the notion of nirguna bhakti, uh, which means f devotion, uh, f devotion, uh, pure devotion, devotion without any selfish impulse to God, without form, that is to the divine, to uh, uh, Satguru, to Vaheguru, to Ik Onkar, to use Sikh names for God, to that, that deity who, like the other figures I've spoken about, who see the divine as beyond all human language, beyond all words. Not that that, that uh, Waheguru or Ikonkar is unavailable to human beings, but that none of the language that human beings have used uh, is in the end adequate, uh, an adequate vessel to contain the fullness of the divine. That bhakti is a Sanskrit word that's shared by many religious traditions in India, and it, it can be translated in many ways, devotion, love, sharing. But when I speak about uh, Guru Nanak and his vision uh, of God uh, as being uh, a deity, a divinity beyond form, uh, I, or I myself begin to feel something of the immensity of that, of that, of that divine reality that shatters and breaks all boundaries, all vessels. Um, as I've mentioned, Guru Nanak, uh, the founder, this whole idea of being a founder of a religion, this kind of developed slowly in the Sikh tradition. He, he was born in northern India, and like uh, other devotional figures of his time, um, he, had, he was renowned for his wonderful singing voice and his, great, his capacity to create wonderful devotional songs. And this was his only interest in life. He, he slowly moved away from the conventional existence prepared for him by his prosperous family. And he took to the road with a companion and began to sing uh, of his love for the supreme formless God in poetry and songs that are remembered to this day and form part of the, the Sikh scripture, the Guru Granth Sahib. Um, and uh, as he wandered the, the lanes and highways and byways of, of the India of his day, in fact, he, he wandered as far as Mecca and to the southern uh, part of India, uh, he attracted people, he and his companion, they, people were attracted to his devotion, his piety, his singing. And it's from this that slowly a, a community of followers began to develop. And over time, it began to distinguish itself from, from Hinduism and from Islam and from other uh, of the dominant traditions of the day.
But one thing to keep in mind when talking about Sikhism or Hinduism or Judaism is that this whole notion of ism tends to put this straitjacket of, uh, of, 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 of a singularity upon these traditions, and it overlooks the fact, for instance, in the case of Sikhism, that Guru Nanak emerged from a context of popular devotion that was Hindu, that was also influenced by the lingering traces of Buddhism and by Jainism, as well as, of course, by the, especially in the northern India of that day, the very, uh, the very uh, uh, large influence of Islam on, on everyday religion. Now, one of the common misconceptions about Sikhism is that it's a syncretistic religion. It kind of is a new religion that blends Hinduism and Islam and makes something new. A six do not see it this way, and I would agree that that's a rather simplistic uh, way of categorizing what, in fact, was a, a new uh, and, uh, and devotional spirituality that arose spontaneously uh, from the religious experience of Nanak. And if you were to read some of the details of his biography uh, and how he uh, had an encounter with, uh, with God who, who gave him a, a, a divine beverage uh, to, to drink uh, in, in, a, in an encounter, uh, which is very much like a death and resurrection story. Um, if you were to read that, you would see that actually he was touched by divine grace to be able to sing words in such a way that he could awaken the, the love for, for, for Wahiguru, for Ikonkar, for, for God in the hearts of his hearers. That's how he began. He didn't begin as a Sikh or as a Hindu or as a Muslim. He actually began as, as what we find, uh, he began as that classic figure that often arises even to this day in India of someone so overwhelmed by love for the divine that he or she just takes to the road and in a quest like Buddha or takes to the road and sings uh, these wonderful songs and tells stories uh, that delight, uh, at least up until recently, that delight the hearts of young and old wherever such uh, figures travel. So, uh, a bit more, just a couple more comments about the history of Sikhism. Even though, obviously, in India, everybody knows what Sikhism is, and today, Sikhism is better known than it was globally because of the uh, Indian diaspora of people from India and their children and grandchildren now living all over the planet, and wherever there are is a, a, a concentration of people of Indian background, there will be people of Sikh background as well. Sikhism is perhaps a little bit better known than Jainism, um, but Jainism is a religion that, in, in, in terms of its numerical strength, is quite small, but not so with Sikhism. It's actually the fifth uh, largest religion in the world. With 25 million followers, uh, it, it comes right behind uh, religions such as Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism as number five. Now, it doesn't have, like these other religious traditions, uh, in the high hundreds of millions or even billions of followers. With 25 million, it's much smaller, and yet it still remains number five. So, um, that's uh, something to keep in mind when thinking about Sikhism. Um, there are some uh, basic ideas and teachings that are central uh, to uh, Sikhism. We have a short amount of time together. So, besides this teaching of Nirguna Bhakti, this, this, which is a central idea, it's also shared with, with other uh, religious traditions, especially in the northern India of that day. But what this formless devotion what this devotion without condition to a de deity who is conceived of as not having any of the forms of, say, the, the images of the gods and goddesses and the surrounding Hindu temples, this gives rise to, um, a, in a similar way, to a social structure that patterns that, and that is it undermines the notion, any notion, of social hierarchy of distinctions between different people. This, of course, is an ideal that many human beings have had. It's certainly hard to realize, but it does remain part of a Sikhism. There is this, this rejection of social hierarchy uh, and, uh, and the idea that people should be categorized on the basis of some kind of distinction at birth. There's a strong reaction to ritualism. There is, of course, Sikh ritual, but ritualism is when religion is reduced just to performing ceremonies. And there is a, that always happens in religious traditions, and often reformers call us back from that. 
There's a rejection also of it, the excessive renunciation that sometimes one might see in traditional Indian religions. There's also a rejection of the worship of images, which was very much a part of the Hinduism of that day, although the worship, the, the worship of images was not part of Hinduism, say, 2,000 years ago. It's more associated, perhaps, with, with Buddhism in those days. Uh, so it's a very complex story, the story of Indian religion and spirituality. Just let us leave, the, leave it with this, that Guru Nanak was, was a figure cut right from the cloth of ancient Indian spirituality, and he, his, through his singing and his love for the formless divine, he gave rise to a religious community that now today ranks as the fifth largest religion in the world.